In business news, the latest data from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries reveals that average daily crude oil production rose marginally to 1.27 million barrels per day in June. This marks a surge of 25,000 barrels per day from 1.25 million barrels per day recorded in May. Meanwhile, the secondary sources placed average daily production in June stands at 1.36 million barrels per day, a decrease of 10,000 barrels compared to May's figure of 1.372 million barrels per day. Day. Despite the decline in production, Nigeria maintained its status as Africa's largest oil producer, followed closely by Libya, which produced 1.2 million barrels per day in June. The average crude oil production of 1.27 million barrels per day in June indicates that for the first half of 2024, Nigeria has consistently fallen short of its OPEC production quota of 1.5 million barrels per day and its budget target of 1.78 million barrels per day. The Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Dr. Rabi Olowo, says the adoption of a roadmap of sustainability financial reporting standards by Nigeria has set an exemplary standard for all the African countries to follow, and it, uh, it is ready to assist them in this regard. The FRC boss said this in his opening remarks at a practical workshop on the implementation of the ISB's IFRS and IFRS 2 by financial institutions are in Abuja. He said sustainability is at the centerpiece of human existence and when adopted by financial institutions will bring about better decision making, access to capital, improve employees' engagement, which in turn impacts on the entire economy. Based on the efforts of the Financial Reporting Council and indeed all the stakeholders, Nigeria has become a reference point for best practice and much sought after to assist other African countries in this journey. We are delighted to know that we have two banks, two banks among the financial institutions that have early adopted the ISSB sustainability standards. We therefore look forward to having more of our financial institutions join this train this year and not to wait till the mandatory year. When you report accurately, it will expose your corrupt practices. And if you don't report accurately, when you hide information, when you either in terms of profit, in terms of inflating expenses, in terms of omitting critical um, economic activities, that stems um, corruption. But when you have a regulatory agency like FRC, like Office of the Auditor General for the Federation, and all of them work together. Um, the financial reports, when properly examined, we throw out some corrupt practices. In order to ensure that the right things are done, that's where reporting comes in. So that the regulators will be sure that the right things have been done by the corporates. And then it could also serve as an opportunity to do peer review. If you are doing it right, if I'm not doing it right, we can all come together to gather like this and explain encourage ourselves so that tomorrow this one will not go uh, overboard and then we would have no world to live. To strengthen Nigeria's financial sector, Central Bank of Nigeria requires banks to increase their minimum paid in common equities capital to a specified amount. Analyst reactions have been trailing this initiative. Some said this will help banks increase loans and advances. Managing Editor Chief Economist at ProShare, Mr. Teslim Shitabe, earlier today on our Business Nigeria program, shared his views on the implications of this directive by the Apex Bank. The financial system is quite stable. However, it is important to note that um, researchers at Prusia believe that it is necessary for the CBN to engage in some amount of interventions where you have some smaller, soft institutions that need um, support. And I'll, I'll bring that to the point of what you said, Heritage Bank. Earlier you referred to Heritage Bank. Yes, yeah, so we don't want another Heritage Bank on our plate. So the smaller banks, some of which the CBN has taken under custodial guidance, these banks need to find a way of increasing their equity capital. It is either that they, on their own, enter into combinations that will enable them scale up, quickly scale up within a period of two years, quickly scale up their equity, or the best bet will be hopefully getting an arrangement where banks come together, 
for these banks are not strange bedfellows. Because the fear is that you could merge banks, but they are strange bedfellows, different cultures, different personalities, and you create a whole new monster. Yeah, yeah. So you want to avoid creating a whole new monster. So preferably, we'd want to see a situation where these banks, currently under custodial guidance of the CBN, come together, agree, develop a plan, and then scale up. The government has renewed commitments to using investments in green projects to enhance the development and health of the people. At the launch of the NGX Impact Bread in Lagos, stakeholders committed to cleaner uh, environment. FN Gekop reports. The Nigerian government, through its Ministry of Environment, in association with stakeholders in the capital market, commits to investing in green projects for growth and development. Launching the NGX Impact Board in Lagos, Minister of Environment stressed government's efforts to reduce effects of flood, desertification, and erosion on the environment. But I also think that there is also not enough, where I always say we need this aspect of not be enough because uh, this uh, dry area and the red are not so big. But because the location is still the red for the flood, no one knows where it comes to that, it's very devastating. So we have many issues that we need funding for. Securities and Exchange Commission coordinating and supervising green bonds investment ensures compliance to environment safety standards and innovations. As a government official and also as a regulator of the market. So on the SEC, we are making our presence felt. We will be there every way, every day, and leading the game. This is a platform that we have not only for the green bond, but all the sustainability initiatives, all the SDGs, so that we can all be on the same level. So the financing that they require, and like way he said, any other ministry, any other state government, we are now launching that platform, that portal on the NGS. In 2019, the Nigerian government had introduced the Pioneer Green Bond Investments into the stock markets. In the NGX in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Environment, uh, is working together with issuers to see how they can raise capital in the form of sovereign uh, green bonds uh, to finance some of those initiatives that the Federal Ministry of Environment is trying to pursue in line with, I think, the current, current government's agenda of sustainability. It is expected that a groundbreaking green bond insurance will come into the capital markets in September. Meanwhile, the stock market closed flat, throwing weak indices against some banks. The value of trade showed 11 billion naira. If young Echo TVC News, Lagos. That's our package from the business desk. Next is sports. Good evening.